the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park faithfully erupts 8,400 gallons of steaming water every 90 minutes. That's why it's called Old Faithful. Can others depend on you to be faithful too? When we put our faith in Jesus, we receive an amazing gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit fills us with the fruit of His Spirit. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the living water of God's Word to help us grow all that fruit so we can reflect Jesus wherever we go. Do you remember the fruit of the Spirit we've studied so far? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And today we're on faithfulness. We're using a star-shaped fruit today to remember God's promises always come true. The star reminds us of God's faithfulness to us by sending His Son to save us. All of God's promises come true because God is always faithful. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, keeping His covenant of faith to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. A thousand generations? That's like 38,000 years! The word faith comes from the word pistotita. In the ancient days, they used that word to talk about a guarantee or a warranty that promised that something would come true. So faith that God plants in you through the Holy Spirit is God's warranty that guarantees His promises will come true and helping you understand what He has planned and prepared for you. God is faithful to keep His promises and defends His children. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield. He continues to defend and protect even though we fail. If we are faithless, He remains faithful. So if faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit, that means that God can grow faithfulness in us when we put our faith in Him. And that faith starts as small as a seed. Every time we're putting faith in God's promises, we're becoming full of faith. And that doesn't leave any room for fear to enter in. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13 The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and I am helped. Psalm 28, 7 but some people say, when they see it, they'll believe it. Is that what you say? Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. But what does it mean? Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Just like when you look through binoculars, things seem larger than they appear. Even when you look at a car side view mirror, there's a warning that says things may appear closer than they really are. That's when you're relying on your own understanding instead of trusting God. But when you put faith over fear, that shield of faith controls all your fears, so you can stay in faith no matter what. But if you don't put that shield of faith, fear will soak your mind and heart and your faith will be washed away. In the Middle Ages, way back in the 12th century, soldiers could not tell each other apart because they were wearing so much armor. As a result, they started painting their own shields. Painted on the soldiers' shields were things that were important to them to help them be faithful soldiers no matter what their fears. A lion stood for courage, a bee stood for hard working, and an eagle stood for leadership. Even crosses, stars, moons, and hearts were used on the coat of arms. You can make your own symbols on a shield like God's hands holding you, and even Bible verses to give you courage to be faithful. God is faithful to us because He loves us. Remember, there is no fear in love, because God is love. And when you know that He loves you, you'll be able to grow all of the fruit of the Spirit, and the weeds of fear won't stop you from growing them. That's when we can share the fruit of faithfulness with our family and our friends. And even giving a cool bottle of water for them to drink. Faithfulness is as refreshing as a cool cup of water to a master on a summer day. In Israel, they had to use snow from the mountains in order to cool down their drinks. But on a hot summer day, that would be very hard to get. And it can be equally hard to be faithful in the things that you need to do. 
like getting your chores done, doing your homework, making your bed. Can people trust you? Being faithful to others and all you have been entrusted with is important. Say this water bottle is you. This water is pretty fluid, but you want your faith to be solid as a rock. But how? To develop that solid faith, you need to spend time in God's Word. Pretend the freezer is your Bible and you spend time in the Word. Then when you're done and your mom asks you if you can get your chores done, you can say, don't worry mom, you can count on me. I'm faithful. My faith is as solid as a rock. See? When you have Jesus in your heart, you have a seed of faith growing inside of you. The question is, are you going to water that seed of faith with the living water of God's Word? Just like muscles grow when you use it, a seed of faith grows when you water it. Because through that seed of faith, you can grow the fruit of faithfulness. So you can be full of faith. The Bible tells us to even befriend faithfulness. Psalm 37, 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Well, what does befriend faithfulness mean? Just like when you have a new friend, you have to spend time and energy to make that friendship grow. You need to take care of it just like you would take care of a plant. Like a flower, you take care of the seed of faithfulness by watering it with God's Word and faithfully spending time with the Son of God. Then we can be faithful to Him by doing what He says, even when we can't see how things will turn out. We can bloom and grow into the unique person that He has made and then share the seeds of faithfulness with friends and family. Faith always has confidence, having evidence for what we hope for in the Bible, knowing that all of God's promises will come true. So keep your eyes on the Son, the Son of God's promises, so that you can grow stronger and closer to Him as your friend. But how do you stay close to a friend? By listening to them! Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the Word of God. And it says in John 16, 13, that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. So the fruit of faithfulness is when we take God's words and put them into action sticking them in our mind and our heart by remembering them. Even if it means writing and sticking it around the house, on mirrors and walls, and even wearing it. And listening to them all the time. Just like when we stick by our friends, we listen to them and we remember everything that they say. And being a faithful friend is sticking by their side no matter what. Are you guys ready to go on a faith treasure hunt? We're going to enter into the book of Hebrews, where there's a hall of heroes of faith. These heroes of faith listened to God's word and stuck to God's plan, no matter how scary and dangerous things looked. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah followed God and he received the righteousness that comes by faith, even receiving God's rainbow promise. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God told him to leave his home and go to another land. He even went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land that God promised him, he lived there by faith, because he was like a foreigner just living in tents. It was by faith that Sarah was even able to have a child after Abraham's 100th birthday. They believed that God would keep his promise that their descendants would be like the number of sand on a seashore, and as many as the stars in the sky. And so a whole nation came from this one man, which led to the one that would be the savior of us all. Jesus, all because they followed God and had faith in His promises. So what did all these faith heroes do? They believed God's promises and were faithful to follow His plans. They didn't know exactly how God's promises would come true, but they were willing to do anything to follow His plans because they trusted what God said, because they knew that God will work out everything for good. And they were faithful. Why? It was only because they trusted God's promises, and God empowered them to do that work. Let's look at some more faith heroes. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of what the king had demanded. By faith, Moses, when he grew up, refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, because he loved God more than the treasures of Egypt. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He just kept on going because he kept his eyes on God. 
and it was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts in obedience to God for their firstborn son's protection. By faith, the people crossed through the Red Sea on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. But Gideon needed signs from God to help his faith, and God was faithful to give it. I said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have said, look, I will put out a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand. And it happened. When I came the next morning, the ground was dry, but the fleece was wet with dew. But I still had questions. Do not be angry with me, but let me test, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, but on all the ground let there be dew. Oh, and God did so that night. The fleece was dry, but there was dew on the ground. So God's faithfulness helped him to be faithful, and he conquered an entire army with only 300 men. And they were only holding torches, breaking jars, and blowing trumpets. And because of their faithfulness, the enemy started attacking themselves, they were so confused. God and Gideon were faithful to each other. Even David had faith over fear to face Goliath. This day, Goliath, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. The battle is the Lord's. You come to me with sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. <laughs> my God is not weak. There was an evil law in the land that was created to trap Daniel for praying to God. But Daniel was faithful to God no matter what, and never stopped praying, even if he had to face a lion's den. And he was caught praying and was taken to the king. But I will respect no decree or law that prevents me from praying to the one true God. Your God means this much to you? He does. But because he was obedient and did what was right, God fought for him and protected him when he stayed in the lion's den overnight. The lion's roar may be mighty, Arslan, but my God is mightier. The next day, King Darius went to see if Daniel was still alive. Because Daniel was faithful to God, God showed him his faithfulness as well. Daniel! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so they would not hurt me for I have been found innocent in his sight. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Lift him out! I command everyone in my kingdom to worship and honor the God of Daniel. King Darius told his entire kingdom to believe in Daniel's God. When you are faithful, you're pointing to God. But growing the fruit of faithfulness is not always easy. Jonathan and David were faithful friends. They stuck by each other's side no matter what. It was amazing because Jonathan was the son of King Saul, who became David's enemy. Let's look at some sticky things to see which one of them are most like David and Jonathan's friendship. Super sticky! We're going to see which one of these three tapes can faithfully hold up a person from falling. They first wrapped him up with masking tape, but he fell after one and a half minutes. Then they wrapped him up with an expensive clear sticky tape, but he fell after two and a half minutes. Finally, they tried a parcel tape, and they kept waiting for him to fall, but after five minutes they got bored and went to get a snack, because they saw the parcel tape was faithfully holding him up. Just like Jonathan and David's friendship, they always stuck by each other's side. Do you have a best friend or a friend that is faithful to you? Then they are showing the fruit of God's faithfulness to you. Because God is the most faithful friend of all. The Bible says that he even sticks closer than a brother. A person that has many companions may come to ruin, but there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. 
Our seed of faith helps us to focus on God's promises instead of our fears. We might not be able to see all of God's plans, but when we keep our eyes on God's promises, remembering that He loves us, then we can stand strong and grow strong in faith closer to Him. When we show faithfulness at a small level, we can move on to level two because our faith will grow. The Holy Spirit is growing the fruit of faithfulness inside of you so that you can look more like Jesus. And your faithfulness will leave no room for fear. Remember, faith and fear cannot exist together. Because you trust God and His promises, especially His promise to always be by your side. Bible Treasure Hunt time! Get your Bibles out for our Clue Came True. In this week's edition, there's a hidden word that you need to find. See if you can find it. Our first clue comes from Proverbs 18, 24, and it came true in John 15, 14. Jesus is our, that sticks, then a brother. Our next clue comes from Psalm 91, 1 through 2, and it came true in Revelation 1, 8. We can rest in the shadow of the, who, and, and who? Our final clue comes from Isaiah 7:14, and it came true in Matthew 1:23. The son God sent us was his, who was called, which means God, us. So remember, even if you can't see where you're going, God does, and he is always by your side. Keep being faithful and walk beside him in faith.